So today, I'm gonna show you how to assemble this. Stay tuned. Hey guys, so for those of you who don't know, my name is Michael and I am the woodworker for MK Designs. And yeah, today I'm gonna to show you how to assemble the flagship table saw sled, crosscut sled from King's Fine Woodworking. Um, many of you, have seen, in my other videos, you've seen me use my old crosscut sled and it was based on James' original design for the extreme crosscut sled. And James got to thinking about it and that thing's a little bit heavy and there, there's some people out there that wouldn't be able to pick it up and move it the way you need to be able to do. So he wanted to make a lighter design that was a little bit more intuitive and had more features. So he designed this one with, not only are the, first of all, the one major improvement he made was, first of all, these, the, the zero clearance inserts. Um, the old ones were replaceable and you could make or buy a, a couple of them, one for your dado stack, one for your eighth inch blade, one for your thin curve blade, so forth and so on, but that you couldn't move them, couldn't adjust them at all. These, not only are they replaceable if they get damaged, but they're adjustable, which means you can adjust them. Like right now I have it adjust, adjusted for my normal blade, um, but I can adjust it to a thin curve blade. I can push them in for that, or I can slide them out for a dado stack. Um, but if they do get damaged, they are replaceable. There's just four screws that hold them in place. On the, on, on the base and you take those screws out and you put the new one down and screw it back down and set it up. And the same with the ones on the back fence. This is another improvement. He added zero clearance to the back, to the front back fence so that you didn't have a wide gap on the back fence. You could also have a zero clearance here and these are adjustable and replaceable as well. Uh, he did make his own stop block um, for this one and yeah, he, he, he goes over how to, how to make that and everything. But what I'm gonna show you today is if you purchase the entire sled kit from King's Fine Woodworking, this is how you unbox it and, uh, and, and assemble it to fit your table saw. Um, you, obviously you can buy the plans and make the parts yourself. And this video will help you with the assembly of it once you have all the parts made. Now with the kit, you do get the detailed plans and it has everything you need, including all the hardware and everything. But if you buy the kit, you get all the hardware you need. And if when you get your kit, you open it up and you realize that there's a part missing or something, just reach out to James and he'll, he'll get it replaced for you. Um, so yeah, I, I can't speak highly enough for this, this fair, for this sled. Um, another improvement that he made is the front fence is removable. So if you have a white and longer board that you need to cross cut, or when you're using the picture frame sled or the miter attachments, you can have boards stick out past your fence. And that's, that's great. I mean, part of the reason that mine is based on James's original design is because I needed to cross cut wider boards. So I made mine a little bit deeper and a little bit wider um, and just made adjustments from there based on his plans. <laughs> so yeah, this, this, this thing is a major upgrade from my previous one. And my previous one, I, I needed to make a new one anyway because my previous one sits on top of my table saw and then I cover it, cover them both with a tarp and we get snow and rain here in Colorado. And unfortunately my roof doesn't go over far enough. So it winds up sitting out in the elements more often than I would like. And my original crosscut sled, not my, my original, it's my, actually my second one, but the, my old crosscut sled, um, it got wet and the, the Baltic on it started to buckle and it, it's just it's no longer accurate. The fence is still where it was supposed to be, but the table or the base itself was, had wavy spots in it. And so I needed to replace it anyway. And <laughs> James came out with this one and this is where it's at. So you came here to watch me, to sh for me to show you how to assemble this thing. So that's what we're gonna do. And yeah, let's get to it. So as most of you know, James and I work together on a lot of different things. And 
He gave me this, so I don't have a shipping label or anything. I just went up there and picked it up from him. When you get yours, it'll look just like this, except yours will have a shipping label on it. Here's somewhere, I'm not positive exactly where, but somewhere, I don't know where he puts them on here. So let's get it open and see what's all inside. And be careful using a utility knife. There are some plastic pieces in here and you don't want to cut into the plywood. So I'm just being very careful when using a knife. You could just tear it if you wanted to, but you could make it cleaner. Get this out of the way. Oh. And cut these pieces. All right, so yeah, he's got a lot of packing paper in here. Let me grab a bag and I'll be right back. Okay, yeah, he told me he did this. I just, <laughs> it's shredded up cardboard to help keep the pieces from moving around too much during shipment. Um, I forgot that he did it, but <laughs> you just have to get it out of the way so you can get everything out. And if you don't tear the box like I did, you can actually just keep most of it in here and then recycle the whole thing. Cause yeah, it's just shredded up cardboard. So, yeah, okay. So here's all the parts. Um, when you get it unboxed, this is what you're gonna be looking at. Here's your hardware. It's got your star knobs, your toggle clamp, your hold down and screws and stuff like that. Uh, what's this? Uh, this is the angle grinder or angle gauge for the um, uh, picture frame, or not the picture frame, the miter attachment that you have for it. Uh, this is a stop block for the back fence and yeah, these, they slide together pretty well. He's, he's got an angle cut on it so that it actually sits flat on the fence. Uh, here is the back fence and the back fence is the one that is closest to you. So when you're using the sled, this is the one you're holding on to and pushing forward. Uh, he's already got the chamfer on the bottom edge here for you. You don't have to do that. Uh, this is the zero clearance inserts for the base, like that, and here's the miter bars for your miter slots on your table saw for this sled to attach to so it lines up with your saw. And this I believe is the center base piece, yeah this is the center base piece so your sled's sitting like this, your zero clearance inserts go over these bolts and you can adjust them in and out like that. So that's how that goes together. The rest of the parts fit together as you'll see here shortly. Move that out of the way. Here is the triangle for the picture frame or the 45, yeah, the picture frame attachment is what he calls it. And let's see here. This is the acrylic top for the safety box. And here's the parts of the safety box. Yep, you got four of those and then the acrylic piece. This is the stop block for the picture frame. This is the ruler for it. So essentially this sit, squeezes on like that. It's a really tight fit. You put your toggle clamp to lock it into place. And yeah, that's how that works. And let's see here, here's the front fence. So this is the fence that's furthest away from you in the back like that. Um, I know you couldn't see that, sorry. But yeah, it's the fence that's furthest away from you. So the front fence. And, and trust me, there's a whole conversation between James and I and a couple other people <laughs> about which is the front, which is the back fence. Uh, the multifunction miter blade. So this is for, this goes on here for your multifunction miter cut attachment. And these are the outside runners for the sled. So these go on the outside bottom to help support it. That's part of the, part of the way he cut down the weight on it was he took a lot of the plywood in the middle out. You just have these two on the outside to keep everything level and flat with your table so that it runs like that. Uh, these two pieces, they go on 
the inside between the T-tracks. So you have your base, those go on next to the T-tracks, and then your zero clearance inserts go in between like that. So that's what these are for. Let's set that over there. And here's the zero clearance for the fence. So you got those two that go on your fence. You get your zero clearance back there. <clears throat> and these are the middle pieces for the top of the sled. These go on the outside of the T-tracks. And detailed plans. And you got your little ruler here. I'm not sure exactly where that goes, but I'll find out. I should know, but I don't exactly know where it goes. And a little sticker. And last but not least, this is the mounting, my, oh, the minor function, multifunction mounting board. So this is the mounting board that your um, angle gauge goes onto for your multifunction miter. And that should be everything. And like I said, if you didn't tear the box like I did, you can just keep all this shredded cardboard in here and recycle it all together. But I tore it, so now I gotta get it cleaned up before I can go on. I'll be right back. So here is all the parts laid out as best I could on my table. But you can see there's quite a few parts but believe it or not, the assembly is not that difficult. So let's get started on that, shall we? Okay, so the first step is you wanna get a flat square surface. I'm using my work, top, my bent, my work table here because um, I know it's dead flat. I could use the top of my table saw as well, but this is actually easier for me to get a good shot for you guys. So, and to make it square, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna clamp down two levels. I've got an eight foot and a four foot level here, and I'm gonna clamp them down one at a time. I'm gonna start with the eight foot. I'm basically just gonna line it up with the edge of my workbench, like so. And then I'll clamp the other side to keep it from twisting on me. And now I've got a straight reference point. And to get the second one, the four foot level, with it, I'm going to use a framing square because it's the biggest square that I have and it's, it's pretty accurate. It's accurate enough for this step anyway. Um, and I'm going to square that up and then I will clamp it down in place. Make sure I'm square everywhere. And I just threw it off because <laughs> I bumped it. So let me bump it back. There we go. I'm gonna get it close to being clamped down because I do want this to be as square as possible, but it doesn't have to be dead on. But here in a second, I'll check it against one of my more accurate squares. I just, I don't use the smaller one because it is, well, smaller. <laughs> And this is a pretty large area to try and square up, but I know you guys can't see it, but it's it's dead on actually. So that frame of square is pretty accurate, like I said. Okay, so you're gonna assemble the base first. And so you'll need the middle section of the sled. This is your saw blade will go through here to give you a reference idea of where this piece goes in the whole construction. You'll need your two outside runners those on the outside like this you will need the top the upper board outside board that's these two pieces and they'll go like this and you need two upper out inside boards these two they'll go against the other side of the t-track so what i'm going to do i'm going to lay it out first before i even start to think about gluing it i'm going to lay the outside runner here and then I'm gonna slide over my center board, get it close. I'm gonna butt my outs upper outside board against the level as well. And then I'm gonna push my center board 
to where it's flush with that board. And then on the other side, I've got my other runner. I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna actually butt this piece up to the T-Track first, then I'm gonna slide this piece under and set it like that. Make sure everything comes together, pushes together real well. Now, because we're using Baltic, it can, the humidity and whatnot can affect it, but once you glue this down, it will be flush like it should be. And then these two pieces go just like that. And that's the sled. So now I'm gonna glue it. Now that I know how I'm gonna do this, I'm going to glue it down and I'm gonna start over here. So I'll lift this piece off. And so I need to get glue on the outside runner here, the inside the T-Trek here, and I can put a little bit on the in, on here. Um, I don't want a lot of squeeze out, so I want to, kind of want to go a little, a little bit sparing on my glue, but I want to make sure that I get as much of the surface covered on both pieces as I can and still get an effective glue joint. So I'm going to take care of that real quick, and then we'll move to the next step. So as I said, I'm going to use my glue sparingly. I'm going to try to have as little squeeze out as possible. And as I glue each section down, I'm going to put a weight on it. Now I wanted to slow it down here because I wanted to show you how to actually insert this board underneath like you need to do and get it exactly where you need it to be because you don't have another square angle on this side of it. So I'm slowing it down here so I can show you that. So now what you're going to do is when you go to put your outside top board on, you're gonna slide your runner underneath and then you're gonna take a flat board and push until it connect, until it, it, it's flush with the, until the two boards are flush. Uh, if you do like I do and bump it, you're gonna push it too far under, but that's okay. You can just pull it back because the glue doesn't sit quite that fast. <laughs> but yeah, you just, you're just gonna do that and then you're gonna put a weight on it uh, once everything's flush. Wipe off as much of the excess glue as you can and let it set. So while I'm waiting, I'm gonna go ahead and get the miter bars ready to go. So I've got them here. And I need the screws the sides to be able to adjust it from my miter slots from in the hardware pack. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this and find those. So there's your hold down hardware, your star knobs, uh, the clamp for the picture frame attachment, and here's all the bolts and washers and things that you're gonna need for the entire sled. So I'll open this up and let me grab my magnet bowl real quick so I don't lose any of these. I'll be right back. Okay, now I've got my magnet bowl. I'm gonna carefully dump these out on here because my bowl is a little too small for all of this. But we got all that. And now I need to find these little things. These are the screws for the miter slots, or for miter bars. So I'm gonna pull all those out of here real quick. Okay, so I'm gonna prep the bars and get them ready to go. Typically you would just screw these in, but I've used these in the past on other jigs that I've made, and they these tend to vibrate out. And on a crosscut sled, it's kind of difficult to get in there and adjust them <laughs> after they're attached to the crosscut sled. So I'm gonna put some Teflon tape on these before I insert them in here. And yeah, so I'm gonna add some Teflon tape and then screw them in, then we'll go over the table saw and get these adjusted before I attach the sled to these. Okay, now I need to get them into the bars. So I don't have the drivers that James has in his videos, but I purchased this a while back for some other work that I needed to get done. And it's got all different kinds, all different sizes of hex sockets. So instead of using an Allen wrench for this, I've got this driver here. I'm gonna use one of these to insert these and the size I need is actually 3 seconds. So this one right here. And this is standard and metric, so yeah. <laughs> 
So I'm going to pop this on here, and then I'm going to start inserting these. And you want to insert them in the side that doesn't have the threads. The threads don't go all the way through, and you probably can't see this, but there's threads all the way to the end here and not on this side. So you want to start it over here where there's no threads on the end. That way you can get it threaded all the way through if you need to. And really you just want to get them in just far enough to where it starts to starts to poke out the other side. So about right there. And yeah, you want to get all four of them in there. Looks like some of my Teflon tape came off, but that's okay. And so you want to get all four in there and then go to the table saw and get these aligned. Okay, so now that we got them over here to the table saw, um, you want to get them set. Now mine, it actually fits mine perfectly dead on. Um, actually, it's a little bit tight right there, which means that back screw, I think, is a bit too much, but it may be another one. So I'll just back it out a little bit. I'll back them all out a little bit. Do, 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 do. Okay. All right, so, yeah, there we go. So mine, it fits perfectly. There's no wiggle at all. I don't, I don't even need the screws, to be honest with you. So um, these miter bars are perfect for the R4512, but your table saw is probably gonna be different. So what you wanna do is you wanna start with the first screw. You wanna get it slid in there, make sure it slides in. Once you get it past it, you wanna try and wiggle it. And if you got any wiggle, you need to tighten it up. If it won't go in, you need to back it out a little bit. Um, and then you'll just keep moving on from the first screw to the second screw and you'll perform the same procedure. Just make sure it doesn't wiggle back and forth. You'll actually be able to feel it and hear it. But yeah, so that's how you adjust them. And before we move on, that one's got a little bit in it, so I'll adjust that. But before we move on, we actually wanna go ahead and get the fences onto the sled. And I'll do that here in just a second. Okay, so I waited overnight um, to get let the glue set up simply because I, I'm not in a rush to get this done and I wanted to make sure that everything worked right for the video. So I went ahead and waited overnight. Using the fast or rapid set, um, the thick and quick uh, from Titebond, uh, you actually only need to wait a couple of hours and the glue will be held in place enough to where you can actually continue on. So it doesn't take long to put this sled together at all. It's taking me a bit longer because of doing the video and everything, but now it's ready to go. So I did clean up a little bit of the squeeze out that I had yesterday, but I want to pull all my weights off and just check everything. Because I don't want my zero clearance. The most important is in here and make sure it didn't, if it did squeeze out on the sides, it didn't go underneath it. Um, Cause you don't want it, the glue to mess up with it sitting flat on your table saw. So, and if you use bricks like I did, you might want to put some paper or something down. I got brick dust everywhere. But yeah, I've got a little bit in here that I need to clean out again some more. So I'm gonna grab some 220 sandpaper. I'm just gonna take this and I'll fold it into thirds. And y'all do know the trick about folding sandpaper into thirds. You actually get a little bit better grip on it and it doesn't slip on you quite as bad. And then I'm just gonna come down through here, clean it up a bit. I can use a screwdriver to push down in the corner if I need to, or I can just use my fingernail. And that's good. Okay, so now I've got my sled here. Now, I know in James's video, he had the, my, the T slot, the T track going from end to end, and it wasn't real clear which end would be the front and the back. So, the end where the T track goes all the way to the end, that is the front. That's where you're going to put your front fence. And so, to do that, you will need the two T bolts 
and two star knobs. T-bolts are right here. We're gonna slide our T-bolts in here like so. And then we're gonna put our fence onto the bolts. Like so. And then we're gonna put the star knobs on. It's not tighten it all the way down yet. I'm gonna flip it around and I'll show you why here in a second. All right, get this out of the way. Flip this around. And you notice I don't have my zero clearance on here yet. And there's actually a reason for that. Loosen that up a bit. So what I'm gonna do, make sure you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna bring the fence all the way forward to where it's flush with the back end of the sled. And you can put a straight edge on it to make sure it gets flush and all that. And then I'm gonna tighten it down. But I'm not done. And I'm gonna explain this. I'm going to put screws in the bottom here temporarily to help hold this in place. And the reason being is because when I go to cut through the sled this way, let me grab the back fence and show you real quick. So I'll have my back fence on here like so, roughly. And it'll, be, it'll have two screws in it, one here and one about here. Um, and that's where that, that'll hold that on until I get everything squared up. So I'm going to cut through and it's going to separate the two halves of the sled. With that in place, with only those two holding it down, holding it down the back fence, the sled is going to shift like this every time I go to move it, even with the two screws back here holding it. You're going to have a heck of a time getting everything squared up, no matter what method you use to square it up if that happens. So you want to put screws in temporarily in the front fence so that it will hold everything together while you're squaring it up. So that's why I want to add the extra screws to that. So I'm going to do that real quick and then we'll attach the front fence and move on. Okay, so I'm going to flip it over like this. I'm going to hang the front fence off my table a little bit and I'm going to clamp it down just a bit to help hold it in place. I'm going to do that out here on the runners like so. Actually, I'm going to do it here in the middle because I think I'm going to drive my screws into the thicker part. I'm not clamping it down to the table, I'm just clamping the fence to the sled just so I have a little bit better grip. Then I'm gonna pre-drill some holes and drive some screws. All right, now I've got these Deckmate inch and a quarter screws and I'm gonna drive them into the holes. And it's not real critical that this fence be perfectly flush with the back. It just, it has to be close. Because it's, you're not gonna be referencing off of it when you're actually making your cross cuts. Now, while I've got it in this position, um, I, wanna, I wanna go ahead and sand it and get it ready for wax. You can see I got a little bit of squeeze out down here as well. That's not gonna interfere with anything, but I'll get, I'll get it as much of it out as I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand this and then I'll apply the first coat of wax. So for sanding, I'm using 220 grit. Um, this stuff is great, not sponsored, <laughs> but um, I came across them a while back and they're fantastic. I love this sandpaper. It lasts longer than any that I've ever used, including the Festool granite. Um, it lasts about as long as the granite does and that's one of the best ones out there. And th these guys are great, check them out. <clears throat> so again, I'm using 220 because I don't need to rough anything up, I'm just trying to get it smooth before I put on the first coat of wax.
All right, so now that I got the wax on and giving it time to dry, I'll flip it back over and get ready to put the back fence on. And then I wanna make sure I get it as close to center as possible because it doesn't go all the way to the edge. So there's a gap on either side and the two sides are supposed to be the same. The way I got, the way I figured out that measurement is I took the measurement of the, the whole sled and I subtracted the length of the fence and divided that by two. And I came up with one and 15 sixteenths. So I've got that set on my adjustable square here and I'm just gonna bring it up and I'm gonna slide the fence over until I touch. Come over here and double check it. And I'm good to go. That's where I need it right there. I also want to pull it forward to make sure it's flush with the front of the sled all the way across. And then I'm going to put a couple of clamps on it. <clears throat> and I'm just going to do them kind of loose at the moment. Because I, I want to double check everything before I actually clamp it down tight. I'm going to grab my woodpecker's square. I'm gonna slide it on here and I'm gonna check that the fence is perfectly perpendicular, like so. Another way you can do this if you don't have a, a good square is if you have a three by three or a one, two, three block, you can actually set it in here and you can clamp it to it. Do it like so. And that will help hold it in perfectly straight up and down as you tighten these down I'll probably put one on the other side as well I'm then I'm gonna put just two screws in I'll put one over here and one over here now what I like to do is I like to mark exactly where my screws are at so that my measurement for the five cut method to square everything up is a little bit easier so I'm gonna mark that and then I'll put the screws in underneath Okay, so before I go on to the next step, I want to, I think it's prudent to say that if, you ha if you've been putting off table saw maintenance, now is the time to do it before you set the miter bars onto the crosscut sled. You want to make sure that your blade is perpendicular or actually parallel with your miter slots and you want to make sure your fence is running true and also parallel with your miter slots and if you don't know how to do that I've, I've got a video and there's several videos out there on how to do it on this table saws particular i have a video on both taking care of both and yeah <laughs> so with that being said once you've got all that done then you're ready to move on to the next step now james cuts the miter bars a little narrower or shorter than the crosscut sled is front to back. So you want to get them roughly in the center of the crosscut sled. So you'll take the length of the crosscut sled front to back, subtract the length of the miter bars and divide that by two. And that will give you your distance. Just set up a little adjustable square and you should be good to go. The next thing you want to do is you want to get some pennies, some dimes, whatever and or washers even because that's what i've got quarter inch washers and you want because you want to raise the miter bars just just a little bit proud of the top of the table saw so i'm going to drop a couple in here and get these set in here two there that should be enough we'll see a couple there a couple back here see if that's enough yep just slightly above okay i'll get them set in here then i'll take my adjustable square and i will push it up a little bit to where it's that distance and there's one more step that i am going to do that james didn't do in his video that would actually helps with this table saw and if your table saw bevels off on the front like this the back, whatever. <laughs> um, 
uh, this, this could help you too. Give me one second and I'll get that set up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my straight edge here or level and I'm gonna put it here. You can see how it's a little bit taller than the table saw. So it'll give me a reference point down here to make sure that I bring the front of the sled when I go to set it down flush with the front of the saw. And I will just clamp these down, clamp this down real quick. Okay, so now I've got my bar, miter bars set where I want them. I've got my fence set at 15 and 7 eighths inch inches. I've got this in place. Now I'm ready to set my crosscut sled down on my miter bars. And I'm going to use this Mercury Adhesives CA glue. Again, not sponsored, but it actually works really well. The Tight Bond Instant Glue works just as well, and there's a few others out there, just a CA glue. And I'm going to put enough on here to where it attaches to the sled, but doesn't squeeze out. I'm not going to spread this around anywhere because I do not want it to go onto my cast iron top. If I do, I can get it off, but it's a hassle to go through. And now I'm going to pick up my sled and I'm going to be very careful, butt it up against the fence. Make sure I'm coming to the end of the tip edge of the saw like so and then set it down and then I'm going to put a weight on it and I'm going to wait about five minutes and then we'll be good to go with the rest of it. All right, so my mic decided to stop working at this point. Um, so I'm going to speed this video up and do a voiceover on it. So what I'm what I'm doing is I'm taking the I'm going to take the level off so I can flip the sled over. And when I flip it over, I'm going to put the screws into the miter bars to hold it onto the sled permanently. The CA glue will hold decently, but it won't hold it permanently. And it, it, CA glue is very brittle and can break. So you put the screws in to help hold it in place permanently. Um, I'm going to take a self-centering bit and I'm going to pre-drill the holes and then I'm going to drive the screws into it. And I'm, going to hand, I'm only going to hand tighten them. I'm not going to put any kind of torque force or anything like that on it. Once I get the screws in place, then I'm going to put my second coat of wax on it. And I'm going to wax the miter bars as well. That will allow the sled to slide like I need it to. It'll, it'll slide very, very, very easily after that. And then once I have that done, I am going to flip the sled back over and I'm going to do the five cut method to square the back fence up. Now I'm not going to go over the five cut method in this video. If you need a refresher on that, I have a video on how to do the five cut method and I'll link to it here in the video and you can go check it out and get your sled perfectly square to your table saw. Once I have that done, then I will install the stop block and I'll show you how to do that now. Okay, so there's several methods out there. Um, the one I like to do is I like to actually mark a board at a random length. So say six inches. This board is 10 and a half inches long. Um, so I've got a mark here at six inches and I line it up with the blade. And so I'll rotate my blade and I make sure my, my line is on this side of the blade so that from here to here is six inches, and then I'll line this up dead on with the blade, like so. And while I've got this held down in place, I will bring the stop block over and butt it up against and make sure everything is square, and then I will tighten down the stop block. And then what I like to do is I like to pull it back move the board away from the stop block, bring it up against it again, and then come up to the blade again and double check that nothing moved on me. So I got it dead on right there. So I'm gonna cut this piece off and we'll to go to the next step. All right, wait for the blade to stop and then I'll come over here and show you that it cut it at exactly six inches. And that's what I'm looking for. So now I just need to figure out how to get my tape on here.
Okay, and then once you once you know that's good, then you need to figure out where to put the tape. So you can slide it up underneath here like this. And you need to decide where you want to line your mark up with. So I got my six inch mark right here. And I can line it up to the front here, but the zero clearance for the fence kind of gets in the way. I'll show you that real quick real quick. So I got it lined up with the edge right here. And you can see that from about three inches on. It, it you can't attach it down anywhere so what I would probably do is I'd probably move it to line up with the edge of the pin right here these are glued in so they're not going to move they're perfectly 90 from the stop block from your reference stop block so you just line it up like that and then attach the tape down right here and the easiest way to do that, I still have to sand this, so I'm going to have to do all this again off camera. I forgot to sand it before I started filming. But you want to sand this smooth, like 220, 240, just to make sure the tape is actually, actually sticks down onto it. So what you can do is you can take a little razor blade and make a cut right here and then peel this back just enough so that you can get that 6 inch mark down. And then from there, you can lift up on the, on the tape and pull the rest of it off and smooth the rest of it down. That's the easiest way to do it. Okay, so the next thing we're going to work on is the picture frame sled. And this is everything that comes with it. You've got this little block here, which rides along the ruler as your stops. So if you need to make a 24 inch miter for a picture frame, then you put mark it as 24 and then you take this little clamp. It's, once you attach it to it, it'll clamp it down and hold it in place so that you can butt it up against there I and mean, you can't slam it against it but the clamp will hold it well enough that if you just butt it up against gently it won't move on you and you get a perfect 24 inch miter every time and you've got two bolts to hold it in place in the t-track and two star knobs, star knobs so the first thing you need to do is you actually need to cut an angle a 45 degree on the ruler uh, the holes are pre-drilled, that's where you screw it down into the board, and yeah, but first we need to cut the 45 right here. So I'm going to go over to my miter saw and take care of that, and then we'll work on the next part of it. The first thing I want to do is I want to make sure I'm cutting it the right direction. So my 45 needs to go like this, this direction here. So what I'll do is I will just bring it and line up the blade with the very tip of the corner here. So you want to line your blade up right on that corner right there. And so I will line it up. And plug the saw in and make the cut. And I'm, I'm going to go very slow. And yes, I'm using an expensive blade on this. I just don't want to take the time to change it out. It's good and sharp this isn't going to mess it up because it is an aluminum ruler so it's, it's not going to mess up my blade any at all the next step is i'm going to attach the sled attachment down and then i need to make a kerf cut in it just so i can get everything so i can get the ruler lined up in the right spot so i'm going to clear all this off and then do that Okay, that's all you need. You don't want it to go all the way through. You don't want to cut this in half because then you'll have trouble lining everything up again. So now we need to attach the ruler, but where do we attach it? So I need to move this, at, move the removable piece out of the way real quick. So essentially you're going to line it up with the curve cut just like that. But in order to have this function, you need it moved out this way. So the easiest way to do that is to take a straight edge and hold it up against right there. So what you're going to do is you're going to bring it in, you're going to line it flush with the edge here and then line it up with your kerf cut right there. And you're going to hold it down then you're going to bring your straight, your straight edge in and butt it up against it. 
and make sure this is held in place. And then you're gonna slide this ruler straight along the straight edge, like so. And that'll bring it out from here, but at the same time, keep it lined up with the kerf or with your blade. <coughs> but how far do you move it? <coughs> well, that's where this comes in. Well, for this part, this is where this comes in. So you're gonna take your stop block here and you're gonna put it on your, on your blade or on your ruler. And with your straight edge, you're gonna bring this back until it makes contact. Like so. So right there is where you want your ruler. And what you can do is hold it in place, make sure it doesn't move on you, bring it down here, and make sure it still makes contact. If it does, then you're good to go. You can put your ruler down, you can screw, put the screws in, and your ruler will be in, in place permanently. So that's my next step. Okay, so here's a neat little trick. If you don't have a self-centering drill bit or a Vix bit, you can actually use a punch like this. This, is, this one is from Spring Tools, and they make a lot of really cool stuff. I, I really like this thing a lot. I use it a lot for my turning and stuff to mark my centers. And you can see that it's got a beveled end on it right there. And so what I'll do is I'll bring it in and I'll have the bevel sit in the bevel or in the countersink. And with that, I know that it's flush. I pull up on this and I knock it down and I've got my, the start of my hole. I can go ahead and I can drill uh, a pilot hole if I need to, but with these self-tapping screws, that's actually enough of a pilot hole to get you going. So I'm gonna take care of that and get this thing screwed down. Okay, one note that you might want to take note of, if you have a saw stop, or if you don't want the ruler coming in contact with your blade at all, um, you may want to take this off and then take it back to your miter saw and shave about a blade width off of it and then screw it back down. It'll bring the front back just a little bit. You had to make this cut first in order to get everything lined up and now you can take it back and, make, and cut a little bit more off. But if you don't want that contact in your saw blade for whatever reason, um, you just take it and cut that off. If you're okay with it, if you're okay with it as is, then the first couple of times you use it, your blade is gonna shave this just a little bit, just, just barely. But after that, it should run through just fine. You won't get any more metal shavings and things of that nature. So on to the next step. Okay, so the next step and the last step for the picture frame attachment is you wanna put your toggle on your stop block. So you need to pull it out, not throw the parts around. So you wanna attach the rubber stop first and it's fairly simple to do. Just take that one off, that nut off and then take one of these washers off. Slide it up in here like so. Put your washer back on and then put your nut back on and then you'll tighten all this down. You'll need two wrenches to do so. And what I found is that if you have it at the very end like this, that's usually the better option. You need to get two wrenches to tighten this down so it doesn't move on you. Um, and then you're gonna attach it to your block. So you're gonna try and, in the down position, you're gonna try and line it up to where your rubber stopper is roughly the middle of the ruler. And you just take a pencil and mark where your holes are at. And then you'll take, you'll pre-drill, and then you'll screw this down. And when you're done, it'll look a little something like that. And that slides onto the ruler, put it at my measurement, and clamp it down. And it won't move unless you just slam against it, like I was saying earlier. That part's done. Now on to the miter attachment. Okay, so the first step for the miter function attachment is we need to get the mounting board ready. So you get the mounting board, it's just the block, size block that you need, but we need to cut a bevel on it up here and we need to mark where the hole goes and drill the hole for it so that we can actually attach it to the sled. 
So that's what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna mark where all my cuts go and the hole goes. And so I'm just gonna cut a 45 right there for this. And then I'm going to mark where my hole goes. So that's where my hole is gonna go for the bolt for it to attach to the crosscut sled. So I'm gonna get those done and then we'll go to the next step. Okay, and now that I have those done, um, and the measurements for these you can find in the plans that actually come with the set that you get. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this set on here. Let's put my bolt in there, slide it up. Make sure it's flush with the fence. A little washer on there. And tighten it down. So that's where I'm at with this. Now we need to attach the angle finder. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna get a board to go here and a board to go here and then I'm gonna double side tape it down. And I'm gonna butt this up against both those boards so that everything is flush here and here. And then I'm gonna put the screws in, which are, the holes for those are right there. They are pre-drilled and you got the holes for the other piece right there. So I'm going to get this pushed back together completely flat and I'll go get those boards and we'll get that attached. All right, so before you do this, you wanna actually make sure you loosen this up because the last thing you wanna do is get everything lined up and then try to open it open it up and it move on you. So I'm gonna loosen that up and then I'm gonna get some double-sided tape on here. And I'll put a link to the stuff that I use down in the description. And you don't need a whole lot, you just need enough to hold it down, so maybe about that much. Let's get that secured down on there. And this isn't coming off, so unless you, you can take the screws out and remove the double-sided tape if you want, but you don't really have to. Once this is down, it's down. You're not, you're not really ever gonna move it again. So I'm going to get my boards lined up where I want them, make sure everything is working like I, I want it to. Okay, and then I will slide, gently move that out. And then I'll remove the backing on the double-sided tape. And the beauty of using double-sided tape is you don't really have to have everything dead in place. I just wanna make sure I get everything butted up exactly right, like so. And then I'll set it down make sure, and then press down on it. And this double-sided tape is pressure activated, so I could remove it up until this point. If I try to remove it right now, it may take some wood with it. But now that I got that down, I can actually slide this back over here out of the way, and I can use my little punch, or I can use my uh, self-centering drill bit and put the three screws in it to hold it down to here and make sure everything's flush here. At this point, it'd be a good idea to check it to make sure it's flush with your fingers. If it's not, you can pull it off and try again. So I'm gonna get the screws in, in here and then we'll put the other boards on. Now, the next piece is it's gonna basically go like this. This piece is gonna go on here flush with the front and then this piece right here is gonna attach to it just like that. So what I wanna do is I want to put a piece of double-sided tape on here and then I want to take this piece, hold it up against the front, then take the second piece and press it down and then I need to remove the attachment, the whole thing, in order to get the screws from underneath. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then we'll attach that piece. Okay, so I just got a piece of printer paper here and I'm gonna tear it in half because I need it in two different places after I put this under. So I need to put this piece underneath the attachment like so. Put it back. Go ahead and tighten it down so it doesn't move on me while I'm doing this. And I'm gonna take the other piece and slide it between the two parts of the angle finder like so. I want to bring it back so that it 
doesn't interfere with the placement. I'll bring it like that, and I'll go ahead and take this piece and I'll pull it and then I'll tighten this down where it won't move on me. And go from there. So I'm using, again, medium thick, medium flex, mercury adhesives, CA glue. I just want to put a, just enough on here to hold it. And I got a little bit on my table right there, so I have to clean that up. And then I'm going to take my spray adhesive and I'm going to spray it on this piece. Or accelerator, not adhesive. And then push it against the bottom and then bring it against my board like so. And that's that. Let me get something to clear that up real quick after I pull this off so it doesn't stick to it. Note to self, when working with CA glue, try not to dribble. And because I didn't spray this with accelerator, it just wipes right up. And I can sand it off if I need to later on. Like so. Okay. And I can loosen this back up. See, my paper's stuck to it. But that's okay. I can get paper out. Like that. And they're not stuck together. And there you go. That's that. And the last thing I have to do is assemble and install the safety box. So these are the pieces that you get for it. And you can see all four of these are the same size. So what I did was I took and shaved off about half an inch so that I have a room down there for, on the bottom for the pass through and yeah so I'm going to assemble this thing upside down essentially because I want to use the top of my table here to reference putting everything together so I'll put it together upside down like so and then this piece just goes in like that and so I'm going to use just use I'm just going to use CA glue to assemble it, but I do want to make sure it's square so that when I do put it on the sled, it lines up like it should. So I'm going to use a square against it as well. So I'm going to lay down a piece of paper real quick so I don't get CA glue all over my table and I'll get that taken care of. Now, of course, you can use regular glue on it if you want. Uh, you just have to put it, you just have to clamp it down and then put it in. And after this step, I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of pin nails in it just to help make sure it stays in place. These are never gonna come into contact with the blade, so no worries there. Plus, they're pin nails, so if they did come into contact with the blade, they wouldn't really cause any harm. <laughs> Table saw blade can cut through them really easily. And now I just need to put the acrylic top on. So it's gonna go on like this. So on one side, I'm gonna take the protective film off that and then I'm gonna put a bead of CA glue around the whole thing one thing I want to do is I want to make sure that this is flush or behind the front just a little bit so that it doesn't interfere with attaching it to the sled. So I'll set it down and then I'll push it back like that just to make sure it is not going to interfere with anything. And then I'll just spray it real quick with the accelerator. And the last and final step is to attach it to the crosscut sled, the safety box. So I've got a couple pieces of cardboard here. I'm gonna set them down so that when I attach this, I know that it's gonna go, it's gonna be off the table a little bit and it's gonna be out of the way. 
So that way it's not going to touch, it's not going to, the box itself is not going to slide on the table. It's not going to interfere with the operation of the sled, nothing like that. So I'm going to try and get it, eyeball it where I want it, roughly right about there. I can take this top film off now as well. And I'll just apply a bunch of CA glue here. And then this one I will actually clamp into place and spray because I can't guarantee that I get the spray into the middle here. I know that the outer edges will probably hold it, but just to be on the safe side, I'm gonna do that. Not so much that it squeezes out all over the place, but enough that it actually holds it in place. About like that. And then I will bring it up here and set it into place like so. And then I'm gonna take my clamp Clamp it down. And I'll spray the edges. And I'll let it sit for about five minutes and then the sled's done. That's everything. Okay, yeah, so that's it guys. I mean, it's everything. It, it, it will do anything you want it to do for a crosscut sled. There's even some smaller parts you could, you could actually rip with this thing um, on smaller parts. I wouldn't take long boards and try to run it through. Of course, you'd have to build a pretty long extension back here to be able to have it level. But at any rate, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing. And this is one of the more, most accurate picture frame sleds or attachments that I've ever used. I've made several picture frame sleds and they never came out quite right but if you follow the instructions in my video and james's video on how to assemble this and get it placed on your sled you can make perfect picture frames and the good news is is this ruler if you need it longer for any reason is replaceable you just take these five screws out drill the drill the new holes in the new one go through the same steps to get the angle on it like you need and you've got a longer ruler for bigger picture frames. Um, you just, you just want to make sure, in order to make everything work right, you want to make sure that it's an eighth inch thick ruler. If not, you may have to create a new stop block for it that with a kerf in it that fits the ruler that you attach to it. Excuse me. <laughs> um, and this, the miter, the miter attachment is dead on accurate. If you put it together right, assemble it right, and you get everything lined up exactly like it needs to be, it's dead on accurate. Um, I would say to within a hundred thousandth of an inch. Um, I haven't tested it, but that would be my guess because the way the, the miters just go together so perfectly. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, I can't say enough about this. This is, a ma this, like I said earlier, this is a major, major upgrade to my previous crosscut sled. And I, 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 there's very little you could probably do to improve on it. Um, but yeah, th th this is fantastic. And so if you've purchased the kit or you purchased the plans, um, I hope you have fun assembling it because it's, it's actually a lot of fun to do. <laughs> um, I took a little bit longer to do it because of the filming and everything to assemble it. And I wanted to make sure everything was just right for you guys so that you had a decent assembly video on, on it. And yeah, but in all honesty, you could probably assemble this thing in less than a day um, if you use the right glue and things like that. I mean, if you use a longer setting PVA glue like Type Bond 3 or Type Bond 2, then yeah, you'll want to wait overnight. But if you use the Rapid Set or the Thick and Quick from Type Bond, you can probably have this done. You don't have to wait like an hour or two for it to set enough for you to be able to move forward and get the rest of it assembled. Um, if you're building it yourself, obviously you'll need to make sure you get the fences glued together correctly. Um, and yeah, that's, that's it. Hey, there's nothing else I can really go on about, but it's a great sled. It does everything that I'm going to need it to do. And I'm sure it'll do everything you're going to need it to do. And enjoy the process. So 
And until next time, guys, happy creating.